So we've had a couple of YouTubers demo out the new DJI Mini 2 and both stating that they were able to buy it over the counter from Best Buy. Pretty lucky breaks for two previously unknown channels and I have to say I think it's pretty fantastic for them. I must admit I'm a little bit unsure if this is a clever new branch of DJI marketing or if it's a genuine fluke that a couple of Best Buys accidentally just sold it early. Certainly other people have gone down to the local Best Buy and seen it on the shelf but not been able to buy it. But either way, the specs and the release date are out of the bag and I have to admit I cannot wait to get hold of this newly updated little beast. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones and many of you will have seen the fun that I've had with the original Mavic Mini and not so much fun I've had with it blowing away and uh, doing its subsequent testing. So I've been watching the usual round of excitement that DJI somehow managed to create each time a new model is coming out and this time it's no different. We can speculate whether or not these were genuine lucky breaks or sly marketing ploys by DJI but for me I just want to zoom straight in on the best bits of what we now know. First off, release date. A few people have been down to the local Best Buy, had seen it on the shelves, tried to buy it and been told that they're not going to be able to get it until the 4th of November. So I'm kind of guessing that's the release date and I'm guessing that a few people will be lining up first thing in the morning to try and get it. But way more important for me is now some of the specs that have uh, obviously been released and the biggest one, the biggest single uh, improvement I see is the use of OcuSync transmission. This matches the Mavic Air 2 and the 2 Pro and it is DJI's top transmission technology, has a range of four to six miles or six to 10 kilometers. So this resolves one of the biggest issues we had with the original Mavic Mini, namely severe signal interference when flying around residential areas. But that's not the only issue that the Mavic Mini had. Being blown away by strong wind was another major issue and a lot of people lost their drone due to that. You all saw the fun that I had and I've done significant testing on the Mavic Mini over the last year and how it handles the wind. The new Mini does apparently have better wind handling ability now. It's not going to be up there with the Mavic Air 2 or the 2 Pro, but as this is one of the main issues with the original Mini, it's great that they've actually done some work on that. What's also interesting is the new remote, very similar to the Air 2's new style remote. Now I was initially a little bit unsure about the remote's much larger size, but of course that larger size houses a much bigger battery. And I've absolutely come to love how the uh, Mavic Air 2's uh, remote can easily handle uh, three, four, even five flights before it needs recharging. So assuming that the same bigger battery is in the new Mini's uh, remote, this is gonna be a massive improvement. And on remotes, of course, um, the Mavic Air 2 recently had an update and it now works with DJI Smart Controller. Now that the Mavic Mini 2 is going to have uh, OcuSync transmission and the uh, stated aim of the Smart Controller is that it will work with any OcuSync 2 uh, transmission model drone, I'm hoping that the new Mini will actually work with the Smart Controller and I'll finally have a reason to buy the Smart Controller as it will work with all of the drones that I own. And finally, of course, we have the new style bag and the elastic holder for the props when in storage. This was another big issue of the original Mavic Mini. Many users getting the motor error warning, which was widely agreed to be, uh, have stemmed from the slight deformation of the rear left prop when it was stored in the standard combo bag. So their solution seems to be adopting the new Air 2 uh, style bag that again, I was a little bit unsure of, but learned to love when hiking. So actually for me, this is another huge improvement over the original Mavic uh, Mini's uh, handbag uh, storage case. Said the new case is absolutely fantastic when you're out walking, it's like a DSLR camera bag and a great improvement. <clears throat> Upping the resolution to 4K was to be expected given that the camera sensor on the Mini was essentially the same as the original Mavic Pro and the original Mavic Air, both of which handled 4K. So this makes good sense to me. It'd be interesting to see if it can also produce raw files either at launch or by an upgrade in the future, as again, the original Air and Pro could do this with the same sensor. Active track is probably a bit unlikely, but to me, in fairness, I think there's only so much tracking you can do of yourself when you're walking or cycling along, and I don't actually get why active track is such a deal breaker to some people, but um, you know, feel free to comment below on why it's important to you. In fact, look, feel free to comment below on pretty much anything to do uh, with all of this. Uh, this media scrum, this media circus that seems to erupt every time a new DJI model comes out. It happens because so many people are interested and so many people watch it. So even though it's not a great way and a lot of people complain about it, it's the way DJI get the excitement going for a new model. And it's worked on me as usual. 
I can't wait to get hold of this new little beast. I do think it's going to be a significant upgrade on the original Mini. So look, on that, if any of you come across it uh, for sale in the next week uh, in a shop that I can get down to, then message me because I certainly want to get hold of it as soon as I can and start putting it through its paces. Anyway, look, enjoy the scrum, the uh, circus for the next week. I hope you stay safe and sane. Either way, until next time, have fun and happy flying.